today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're going to be looking at a Walrus audio pedal. It's the High Fidelity Stereo Reverb, and it's part of their Mako series. Right. We did the re- the delay pedal mm-hmm. in this series, and they have they have a lot of stuff in them. They do. So we've been talking about it tonight. We're going to jump into it. We're going to try to give you an idea of what it can do. <laughs> But not everything it can do. Right. Give you an idea of how you might use the features to shape your own sound, mm-hmm. but not try to show you all of those sounds. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. All right. So, and I've, this is one of the few pedals that got to my pedal board before it got to the demo board. Mm-hmm. So, I've actually had it on my pedal board for maybe a month or two. Um, and interesting. I'm not even sure what settings I have it on <laughs> because it has three banks and three presets per bank that you can save. And right. I took the first bank, I saved three presets, took it over, put it on my board. I've been using two of them pretty heavily and that's been it. Like I'm done. Good. These sound great. I like them. Not, there's nothing no more to see here kind <laughs> of thing. <laughs> so it's been so long since I did that. I'm pretty sure the one's a spring tank reverb. I'm not really sure what the other one is. And the one that was just in the intro it was the spring. Was the spring. So and we're jumping right into it. We can do a reference to stuff. This is the later, but this is the Dolan custom guitar. Maybe if there's room, I'll throw a card up for this because mm-hmm. it's just a special guitar. But there's a reason I'm using it, I guess. Um, yeah, the intro clip we had on the spring, which. And the Tyler JT22, the reverb is off. Yeah. Which is interesting because the amp I use has a reverb in it, and I have it on. Mm -hmm. But it's not like a real huge reverb. Right. So it's normally on all the time, and then if I want a little more spring reverb, I just turn that on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say it's on a good bit, you know, like (laughs) even on top of the amp reverb. Pretty quick. I don't think the 12's up real long. It cuts off pretty quickly. It's worked for me. I like it. Um, the nice thing about this, you have, like I said, you have this middle switch here, which has three banks. We're in bank A. There's three presets for that. Preset one is red. If you click both the bypass and the, I forget what that's even called, the sustain button, if you click them both, which I can't do with a pick of my hand, (laughs) preset two is green, Mm -hmm. preset three is blue. And so blue, this is the one I'm not really sure what the name of it is. But I really like it, you know, quick, quick test run. Um, So it kind of has that shimmer thing. Yeah. A lot of the shimmer pedals we've tried, when I've tried to use them, and I kind of set them up before we play, I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. And then we play, and it either gets lost or it gets, it's too much. Like, it starts to run away with you, and it starts to Mm -hmm. clash. That has kind of that paddish, like if we're doing something kind of slow um, and open, I find that one kind of... It's patty, the word. It's yeah, there was some, some mo- there was modulation in there, and there was some. It, it sounded like octaves, but I don't know if this has true shimmer in it. I don't know that it really said that anywhere, but right. it definitely gives you that space. Yeah, so I like it for that. The third one I set up, and if we read through the things again, we could tell which one it is because it has this weird, like glitchy thing to it. <laughs> and when I first turned it on, we were like, "Well, that's not right, not really usable." But then playing around with it a little bit. Um, Thank you. 
cross between a New York City traffic jam and Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> it's, there's like a weird, there's a, but it's cool. Like it's, yeah. it's cool. And it's like, you know, there's so much in this pedal that you can kind of get into. And I was like, when I was setting it up, I was like, oh, this glitchy thing is really cool. I'll be able to use it somewhere. I haven't. Right. It, it would be hard. I, to well, like one time stuff. I found a, a spot I liked it, but, uh, but if we play something like that, maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll use it. Um, while we're doing this, though, I thought, like, just, I don't know, maybe jump to the, the spring and just talk about this feature here. So you have the sustain or latch switch. If you press it and hold it, mm -hmm. it will grab onto the note you played and just keep it. If you press it and let it go, it will latch to that note, and then you have to press it again to turn it off. So, um... Mm -hmm. It's kind of creative. You could do almost like a, a looper, you know, or just just something a pad, like you, you said. Pad down, right? Um, and so it runs the reverb and parallel. Like, so once you hit that, that reverb holds, and then your guitar goes into like a parallel track. Mm -hmm. So you still have the reverb that you had. Right. right. Why? Because like if you would do the same thing, say we would go over to um, the more sustainy patty one. The patty one. <laughs> So then you're like throwing those overtones mm -hmm. from that reverb in with it too. Right. Uh, so that's, and yeah, I'm sure you could do it in the Glitchy one as well, but <laughs> maybe in the outro. Maybe, maybe later. Um, thanks, David Barber, for the Barber Electronics Direct Drive over on the side. You know, that's what I was kicking on. So cool that you could lay it down with a clean and then click. And then, yeah. And then click the overdrive on it and play the overdrive over top. So that takes us to the knobs we thought. There's a lot of knobs and switches on it. Thought maybe run through those real quick, what they do, give a little example, and then um, just run through all the programs and turn some knobs. We'll make Pat play through all that. Right. Do uh, you want to do your reference tone? I, I will. On uh, the Beard's uh, 2001 McCarty hollow body, both pickups, Tyler JT22. I was only playing the Dolan because you grabbed the other McCarty. McCarty, McCarty party. Um, although, did you see today the first pictures of the SE? <laughs> I didn't uh, see it today, but the SE uh, Silver Sky. Silver Sky. All right. Real quick, man. Where do you start? I think just typical reverb functions. The first one is a dwell or decay knob. So the higher up we have that, the longer it's going to last. If I turn that way down. Oh, wait. Before we do anything, I'm going to get out of the presets so we don't mess up my presets. Come over here. Let's turn this. What do you think? A call? So turn the turn the decay way down. You know what? We got to just turn. Just to make sure that it's not. Right. We got to turn a lot of stuff. Just to get us kind of a blank slate. Getting clearance, Clarence. All right. So we're just looking at decay right now. Mm -hmm. And you and the program you said was on a nice hall. Yeah, the program is the this one that you started. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
so the hall just the hall the decay makes it last a lot longer so we'll turn that down a little bit let's jump over here because i had to turn that up at first the was here. so we have the mix knob all the way off totally dry all the way up totally wet they say around three o'clock is about 50 50 wet dry let's just kind of run that once all right <laughs> So if you were running a wet dry rig or wet dry wet, you could be using that to have total wet signal going out to one of your amps. This is a stereo pedal. Mm -hmm. Probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. Right. Um, I think it's in the title. We're not running it stereo mm -hmm. because we think one, well. It's hard to say. We think a lot of people run their things mono. Plus, we didn't really talk about this, but it would be like a drug <laughs> if we were <laughs> <running> that thing <laughs> stereo. <Yes. laughs> Yeah, it really would. I mean, it would be. But maybe we'll come back and yeah. do a video later yeah. where we have it in stereo. We do some of that stuff. Because uh, in addition to having the three banks with three presets each, you also have MIDI capability. So mm -hmm. if you had like a boss switcher or something like that that could do MIDI, the possibilities would be endless, right? You know, right. you could have different reverbs on every channel of your mm -hmm. thing and just be sending a program to this, uh, which we're not getting into. So... That's some of the real like higher level stuff that it does. Right. We're just looking at like the stuff that we can understand, the low level <laughs> stuff. Um, so we come over here, we have a tweak knob and the tweak knob is interesting because it's really three knobs. And depending on where you have the toggle below that is what the tweak knob's doing. So you have rate, depth, and um, pre-delay. So maybe we'll fool around with this just a little bit here so we'll keep it up pretty high and i'll go over to rate change that depth change that and then we'll talk about pre-delay separately just to give you an idea of like you can put some modulation on your mm. trails with this thing okay <laughs> That slow rate, slow mod, like maybe not real deep with the slow modulation rate on it is really nice. Right. Like it just adds a little bit of movement to the mm -hmm. delay. It gives it a little bit of uh, swagger, I guess, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's nice. The other thing this can do is that third, if we take this toggle the whole way over, now we're on the pre-delay. And so as you turn the knob up, the pre-delay gets bigger. So we'll start, let's just show them what that is. So we'll start with it all the way to the left with no pre-delay, and then we'll go to the extreme. Maybe I'll go back to the middle real quick, just to show you what it, what that is.
favor. Do like a uh, turn all the way down. Mm-hmm. Do like okay. a slap. Yep. And just hear where the reverb is. Right. So with it all the way up, you get that big space. Mm-hmm. And so I think the way, because I'm not, we have no authority. We're no, no, we're no pre-delay authorities. But it seems like between that and the mix, you can really set like kind of a heavy delay, but get it out of the way of your chords. Mm-hmm. So if you put a little bit of drag, the delay doesn't come in right away. You bring the mix down a little bit, maybe. You can play a chord and hear that whole chord, like no delay getting in the way. Like, not just hitting a chord, but like, like right strumming through it. it. Mm-hmm. And then you can hear that delay kind of sneak up behind it, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Really opens up things, I think. Um, so we're not going to leave that all the way up. Let's turn that <laughs> down to like a normal setting. Last knob is the... The tone? The tone knob. Thank you. I need some help. <laughs> nice. So I can see that. And again, this knob's like three knobs in one. So you notice, you switch it, change it, switch it, change it. It it keeps the setting from each place. So we have low, high, and then X. Let's do low and high real quick, and then we'll talk about X. Super chimey on the one end. That high got dangerous. Yeah, that far. Yeah. But the low, when you roll the low all the way up, it got deep, I thought. Yeah, it warms up a lot. So the X knob, depending on which program you're on, the X knob's going to do different things. So if I got the spring program, I think it adds like kind of like driving the tubes for the spring tank. Um, plate, I think it's like driving the plate for, the, for that reverb. We're on hall right now, so I think what the X does is it changes room size. So if I go to X and go all the way to the left, should be a small room, and then as we turn it up, the room size, the perceived room size should get bigger. Patrick, you fell in a well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lassie? <laughs> so. Get Zelda down here. Again, I mean, these are just trying to give you an idea. You have to figure out how you would want to use them and sculpt them and what, what it could do for reverb for yeah. you. Last thing, and when I, I, I say that. Last thing we're going to cover. <laughs> right, because, I mean, we didn't show you how to save presets, right. which is really easy. Um, notice how this light, and it might be hard to see because the, the recording never picks up the lights right. It's purple right now. Mm-hmm. Um, when we first went to bank B, it was probably red. I start turning knobs, it turns purple, telling me that we're editing that preset. If I wanted to save the preset we have right now, I hold both buttons down, it would save the preset. It's really that easy. So get to the bank you want, use both buttons to find the preset you want, change it, save it, good to go. So it's really user-friendly. 
Um, flipping through presets is a matter of pressing both buttons at the same time. Easy to do with your foot. Even if you have it kind of up in the back left of your, of your board, <laughs> have to step over things. Um, we've gotten the knack of it now. Um, reverb programs. Not going to read you the whole thing. You can go on Walrus's website. We'll put a link down below uh, to the pedal where they go into each one a little bit more and also go into what the X knob does because the X knob does something different in each one. But first one is spring, second one is hall, third one is plate. Fourth one is the BFR mode, which they, um, hmm, the big FN reverb, I believe is what that stands for. <laughs> then you have the RFRCT, the refract mode. And that's the one with the glitches in it. And then last you have air. <laughs> and so I think what we're going to do to kind of wrap this up before we wrap this up is turn this to spring let Pat play and I'll try and go through all the modes and maybe turn some knobs, maybe hit the X knob here and there, but we're not trying to specifically show you how every knob is going to affect every program. I think fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Just trying to think of uh, what to play that, you know, it's like, it's like that radio station, the whole office can agree on what, what can I play that will <laughs> translate? Well, yeah, you're going to have to probably switch it up. I will. Here we go. I don't know.
rain stick at the end. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that might have been the outro. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I didn't fool around too much Yeah. with... Like, I changed Jack's knob most of the time. Sometimes brought the... the, the he wouldn't say dwell, but decay up a little bit. And sometimes I brought the mix up a little bit. There is one knob that we haven't touched. And that is... The swell knob. Oh, yes. Right. So we haven't touched the swell knob. And so this is how quickly your guitar will, your guitar and the reverb will swell in after it's turned on. Um, all the way off is off. So it's been off the whole time. Let's not do it. Let's go maybe to the hall, right? Let's not do like the really big, unless you want to do the really big one. Where we get there? I don't know. Um, well, maybe we'll change it. Let's just turn that guy up. Let's just see what it does all the way up. So the longer, when you started playing kind of the fast things, I brought the number, the swell down pretty low because it will kick up faster. Right. Then when you go to the chords, I brought it up a little bit because it right. takes longer for the time. Anyway, really cool features. That's a cool, I mean, that's, there's puddles that people go up for that yeah. do just and, and that. And the, the boss name is uh, escaping me at the moment. The dim not the dimension. Mm -hmm. the, um, I know what you're talking about. I know, because I, I bought a copy. So there'll be a different episode for a pedal I bought that's supposed to mimic that one. Right. Oh my gosh, it's a very rare boss pedal. He'll put the name up or Josh Scott's head will pop up here or something. I don't know. It's up to you to do something different because you're boring. Um, I, I don't. I, I know what it's called because I know what it's called. Trust me. I'll put me. the name up if you text him. Right. <laughs> right. When I, wake up, are... when I wake up at 3 a.m. and text him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, anything else? I think that's it. And I say that I think that's it. There's so much more to it. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to it. If you're so, if you're like big reverbs, if you like different reverbs, I mean, it's a small box yeah. with a lot of packed, in, a lot of stuff packed into it. They're killing it with the Mako series. We've done this in the right. play, but I think they have like the amp simulator and stuff. Our friend Ben just got the amp simulator and like is putting his pedal board together with that on it and no, because he was using a Line Six um, Helix. He's like, well, if I put this at the end, he's just testing it out. He, right. This week, he's been sending messages that he okay. likes it. So, um, and one of the guys that we interviewed for the It's Electra series had that amp simulator sitting behind him <laughs> on the shelf because he was working it. Yeah, right. he's helping design it. So, um, I think that's about it. It's a really cool pedal. I'm not sure we did it complete justice, but you can see there is a lot packed into that. We wanted to do it quick, and I have a feeling this is not a 10 minute video. We never do quick, but we're cute. So. We say we will. Always take a minute, pause, just say thanks for watching. Click on uh, the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like button. Anytime you interact with the show, it really helps us out and is the reason we can get these cool pedals in to share with you and put on our board. And um, 
I think with that, I'm PJ on behalf of the Beard Money. No matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. <laughs>